All right, give it up for all the poets, presenters, everybody you've seen so far. Okay, check it out. Now listen, one thing that we need to talk about, we need to talk about this one thing. After we're hearing all this amazing poetry, after hearing folks present to us all this data, talking about the American uh, education system and where we're at and where we need to go and all the problems we need to fix, we want to talk about it for, for just a, a, a little bit because sometimes the problem can seem so big and vast that you don't know where you fit in or how you can actually do something about it. And, and, and to sort of use a metaphor, let's, let's take it back to, to, to high school physics class, all right? And if we think about physics class, there's, there's something in, the, in it where we talk about energy, right? And, and I love physics because it has these laws. And the interesting thing about the laws regarding energy is that energy sort of tells us there's, there, there, if there's something uh, in it that's not moving, let's say like this little mic stand here, then physics tells us what? That force or energy is required to change its composition. So if I want to move it, I got to apply force. So if we're actually going to change... The problems in our public school system, it's going to take what, y'all? Energy and force. And it's got to come from us. And the interesting thing, another thing about physics is that it, it teaches us that physics, uh, that energy cannot be created or destroyed. That means that the energy already exists. The energy in this room already exists. Dr. King told us that we are all tied together in a single garment of mutual destiny, which means to me that no matter how well I may be doing in Hollywood, if a young brother or sister in Washington, D.C. is not doing well, then I'm not doing well. And so when we think about this concept, and if it's true that energy is required to move something or change the composition of something that's stuck, and that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, energy is either active or it's potential energy. And if it's true that we are all actually tied together in a single garment of mutual destiny, that means that if I apply enough energy and you apply enough energy, we can actually change a system that is messed up. And as we think about that, we can break down the three types of, or three other types of energy that exist. Now, our poets have, exist, have shown something that I love. It's called radiant energy. That's like, you know, when I was in church, they talked about, you know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That's radiant energy, right? And they were shining up here. And then there's another type of energy called kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is the energy that we actually need from each one of us. Because if we're actually going to change things, we're going to actually have to raise our voice. We're actually going to have to raise up. We're actually going to have to collude because part of the problem is we are all colluding in a level of energy that is too low to make a difference. We wake up a little tired. You know, I don't know about you, but, you know, the, the alarm clock goes off and it's like, no, I, I hate my classes. I hate my job. I just had this lady said backstage, I hate my husband. We don't jump out of bed and say, you know what, today is the day I'm going to join with you and you and you, and we're going to change something right now. We're going to change the system. I'm actually going to go show up at the school in my neighborhood, even though I don't have kids that go there, and I'm actually going to mentor a kid. I'm going to do something to actually make a difference. I'm going to use my kinetic energy to do that. So since we're in the Kennedy Center, I figured it'd be nice to to talk about the future. And one of my favorite quotes from one of the Kennedys is it goes like this. He says, the future does not belong to those who are fearful of bold projects and new ideas, but rather the future belongs to those who can blend passion, reason, and courage into a personal commitment to the great ideals and enterprises of American society. If one thing we see on this stage tonight from our poets is passion, it's reason, which is critical thinking, and it's courage, which means coming from your heart. So we ask you all out there, that when you walk out of here, use your passion, your reason, your courage, and most importantly, your energy to affect change in your community at your local schools. Because if we don't do it, it's not going to happen. So one thing I'd like to close out with is, is an affirmation. So with a little energy, we all say this with me. I will not. I will not. No, 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 I need more energy from you. A little more, more vocal energy. I will not, I will not. Allow, fear allow fear to stop me stop. from using my energy to make a difference in my community. Instead, I will act with my heart. That was too quiet, y'all. You scared of your heart? Instead, I will act with my heart and in so doing, change my community 
for the better and give others permission to rise up. Thank you, y'all.